Fast snacks, fast food, fast reviews. Snack Masters Inc., a podcast served to you in 30 minutes or less. Snack Masters Incorporated. Snack Masters. Snack Masters. You'll be snacking with the Snack Masters. Snack Masters. Snack Masters. Hello and welcome to Snack Masters Incorporated. I'm Dooner, here with the only man to ever beat Eli Manning in an Oreo cream licking contest. <laughs> it's MSG. MSG, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. We have an action-packed show. This one is all about these Oreo My Creation Oreos, and we're not just going to review them, but we actually have some of the creators of these very snacks, these contest finalists. They're going to be joining us on the show today. Excellent. Yeah, hard work paid off, man. You did a good job tracking those people down. I'm excited too. You know, I didn't, um, I didn't really put this whole contest together at first. What I did see the cherry cola Oreos at the store, and I picked them up because it sounded really unique and interesting to me. It wasn't until I got home and really looked at the package that I realized that there were two other flavors involved in this, which was the pina colada and the kettle corn. And they're all a little bit different. The Cherry Cola Oreo has a chocolate-covered Oreo with a uh, popping candy inside Pop Rocks, right? Think Pop Rocks. They just can't use the name, just like they can't use the name Coke. The Pina Colada ones, those were a bonus for me because I'd never had an Oreo Thin, and they made these ones on the, uh, like, a thin... I believe the cookie is just vanilla, right? Yeah, I think so. And then the uh, Kettle Corn, that one, they put something inside, too. They put puffed millet pieces in there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I believe, to me, it tastes like, like, like popcorn kernels at the bottom of the bag or something to that effect right it's i don't know but they went with a vanilla like regular style oreo for the kettle corn so they gave you a, a little bit of variety throughout their offerings and they, they well they picked two beverage flavors and uh one popcorn kettle corn flavor what is this contest so you i don't think you knew about this one right did you enter the my oreo creation no no i, I didn't i this one passed me by well what this is is they allow you to well, what you could initially do i guess to make it where the finalists have made it was you'd enter a flavor via tweet or via text to oreo they eventually picked these three finalists they picked their flavors got in touch with them told them that they were running with their flavors to vote on these you can go to my oreo creation contest.com or you can text vote to 59526. The people selected as finalists, they already got $25,000. If they win this whole thing, they get half a million bucks. Yeah, you can look it up. You as voters, um, it's not as good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I think like the like the first prize is like a $6 Fandango gift certificate or something <laughs> really, really silly like that. And then the other one is like a movie projector and a roll-up blanket. Yeah. Did you look on the prize page? That's what they, they give you for voting. No, I didn't know you uh, even got a... A prize for voting. That's cool, though. I mean, at least it's something, right? Oh, yeah. See, you're such you're such a better human being than me. I'm like, what what can you give me here? And I'm, I'm you know, crapping all over a $6 Fandango gift card. Meanwhile, you're like, oh, man, well, they sent me a nice Oreo sticker. I'm good. <laughs> well, I feel like a winner just getting three new Oreo flavors, to tell you the truth, man. I'm, I'm happy about these. Yeah, I mean, Oreo's smart with this, man. People make fun of them. They're like, Oreo just stopped. But they never keep the flavors out for long, so you know that they're going to be kind of rare. And it gives you something to look for when you're in the grocery store. Oreo's not my favorite cookie, but I really like that they take all these different chances and risks with flavors, even if they're not always, you know, if they don't always stick the landing. Well, it's Milk's favorite cookie, so... Martin Luther King? Milk. <laughs> this oh, is it. I thought you said MLK. No. I didn't this... think you said M-I-L-K. M -I -L -K. Milk's favorite Milk. cookie, bro. That's their thing. <laughs> oh, Milk's favorite cookie. That's their lo slogan, man. Come on. <laughs> Oh, all right. You caught me off guard. I thought you were talking about Martin Luther King. I didn't even know Oreos were out in the 1960s. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Ronald Reagan loved jelly beans. I mean, it's is it that crazy that he might like Oreos? He'd probably like cherry cola Oreos or one of these other offerings that are here. Hey, as we mentioned, we have a guest, right? We have Eden Falwell. She is calling out of... I'm going to mess this up. She'll probably have to correct me, but it's Wintika, California. MSG, I've got Eden Falwell on the line. She is the creative genius who entered the My Oreo Creation Contest. Her submission was Cherry Cola Oreos. She's calling in out of 
Get this, Winnetka, California. And you know what that's right next to? <laughs> Reseda, where Daniel LaRusso's from. We've been watching a lot of Cobra Kai lately, so. Macaroni and cheese. Hey, you know what I like. <laughs> I grew up on macaroni and cheese. Hey, listen, I never say no when it comes to macaroni and cheese. That, that's a big point of note for me to see there. But either way, your crane kick landed. You got the cherry cola Oreo made. Eden Fellow, hello. Hi. Um, first of all, it's Winnetka. <laughs> I gotta okay. give a shout out. I gotta give a shout out to my local people here. And I like that you call me creative genius. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, this flavor, this one right here is something that I've always wanted, but in ice cream. I always had this idea for like an urban legend ice cream, which would be cola flavored with pop rocks in it. And it's never been made, but this is the closest sort of because there's yeah. candy, you know, there's the uh, gummy, like there's the Harbio gummy colas. I love those. There's Japanese super colas. But this is really, I think, the first oh. cola cookie I can say I've ever had. I haven't had a cola cookie either. I've always been a fan of cola flavored anything. I remember when I was a kid and that was one of the things that I was sort of trying to conjure up with this flavor was I knew that the flavors would be coming out in the summer because the contest was last summer. And they said that they would be released to the public, you know, during the summertime. And I thought, okay, picnics, barbecues, you know, what conjures up that whole idea of summer for me was going with my family and having a bucket of chicken and a big package of Oreo cookies. Um, when I saw that they had done the ones with, with the popping candy last year for the fireworks, I was like, wow, this is going to be great. I'll combine that whole idea of soda and having an Oreo, and that's what I came up with. Eden, how did you hear about the contest? And when you, you entered, did you do more than one submission? You mentioned some strategy here. You knew this would be out in the summer, so you really wanted to pander to those summer flavors. Smart move, calculated move. I like it, cold-blooded. <laughs> but what, what, did you enter other contests that Oreo's done? Do you enter a lot of these things, or did you, you know, is this kind of happenstance? Well, I, I like to do little contests if I see them here and there. You know, if I get a package of cookies or I buy something. I think that's how I found out about this contest. I think um, maybe there was a promotion on the package. MSG, have you ever won any of these contests? No, no, I, I, I don't enter them too much just because I feel like there's, you know, so many people and I'm I'm not super creative, man. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we both did the Mystery Oreo, another Oreo contest, and I mm. entered multiple days in a row, Fruity Pebbles. We didn't get a check. We didn't, we didn't win anything in our end. So I always thought these went off in the ether, but here you are. You're, you're a real human being who won one of these things. And not just, you didn't just name the Oreo. You actually got your own flavor made. That is, that is so much cooler in my book. It is absolutely mind blowing. You know, I kind of, at every stage of the game, I sort of felt like it was fate. You know, I, like I didn't, and it still feels a little bit like that. It still feels a little bit like it's not really happening because, I mean, the grand prize for this is a lot of money. It would be life changing. This is a once in a lifetime thing. So what's that like? What is that like when Oreo selects you? What did, how do they get in touch with you? How did you hear about this and how did you get back to them? So I just I started texting. That's how I entered. So how do they contact you? If I remember correctly, the contest was for a few months over the summer. And we were supposed to find out if you were a finalist in, I think, July. I do the contest and then I forget about it because like, you know, you mm -hmm. don't win. You just don't win. So it's kind of like you throw it in there and eh, whatever, you know, move on with life. But I got a phone call that in December and the phone call was actually quite terrifying because the phone call said, you're a finalist in the My Oreo Creation Contest. Um, we've been trying to reach you and we have not been able to for, I think it was 10 days and you need to call us back today. It's the final day. And if we don't hear from you, you're going to forfeit your prize. And I was absolutely freaking out. I thought, okay, this is either some weird kind of phishing scam where somebody's trying to get my information or do you know what I mean? Or, or it's real and oh my God, I have to contact them like right now, <laughs> like I have to drop everything. And I thought it was the mystery thing. So I thought it's either $10,000 or it's 50,000. And I was like, either way, if I've won $10,000 and I screw this up because I don't contact these people, I'm going to be world's biggest idiot. 
Eden, we're going to review these when we get off the line with you. I, I've had them before, though. This is actually my second box here that I have today, so I've liked them quite a bit. I tend to like off flavors. You know, I like to take a risk with these things, but I think that they came out really brilliant. I hope you, you know, best of luck in the contest. We did an informal poll on our site. You guys won 53% versus the other ones. Pina Colada came in second. Then it was a kettle corn. I, I hope you win. What's next for you with this contest and moving forward? Well, honestly... My son is going to college, and so this money would be such an amazing gift for us. He's he's starting college in the fall, and we've been, like, scrambling around trying to figure out how we're going to pay for this. So, I mean, that's, that's the big thing for the money. Um, and also, yeah, I think I want to take a trip. I, I have a sister that lives in the Netherlands, and I haven't seen her in a few years, and so it would be amazing to get to take the kids and, and go have a little vacation over there. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm super excited. And honestly, I'm a winner already. Uh, just seeing the cookies in the store. <laughs> I mean, that's like a cheesy thing to say, right? But it's true. And I, and I already got $25,000, which is more money than most people win ever, or even have a chance at winning. Eden, this would be like the first line on my resume. I would never stop talking about how my Oreo was made and put in the store. So I don't blame you at all. <laughs> if you want to send Eden Falwell's son to college, <laughs> go to myoreocreation.com. Vote for the Cherry, Cori Cherry Cola Oreo. You can also vote by texting 59526. Eden, thank you so much for joining MSG and I today. We really appreciate having you on the show and best of luck in the contest. Thank you guys so much. This has been a life-changing experience already. It's just been yeah, it's a dream come true. Super fun. <laughs> Go get some Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Eden, for your time. Best of luck to her. MSG, you picked up your package of Cherry Cola Oreos. I've got my Cherry Cola Oreos. Like we said at the top, and she mentioned in there, this is a Cherry Cola Oreo artificially flavored. It's got a chocolate top with a Cherry Cola cream and Pop Rocks, or popping candy as they call it, inside of the cream. It's kind of like a yin-yang, right? It's got the uh, the white and the red. And it's uh, typical Oreo stats on here. Two cookies, 140 calories, 6 grams of fat, 13 grams of sugar. Have you dug into these yet? Uh, of course I have. I, I opened them right as I got them out to the car when I bought them at the store. So um, I'm very, very familiar with the flavor here. I'm going to take a bite into one of these. I'm going to I'm gonna check it out. They, uh, it's it's t standard Oreo size. So these are everything. The oddest flavor is also sort of in the, uh, the most, I guess, casual or the most... Uh, I'm not casual, the most common attire. It's in the chocolate cookie. These aren't overly sweet, because when you hear Cherry Cola Oreo, that does sort of evoke a very sweet, candied taste to it, and especially when you hear popping candy. Yet, these are probably the least sweet of these cookies. Right? I mean, they're still sweet, but they're probably the least sweet. And maybe they toned it down a little bit because they're adding the Pop Rocks or something like that. I'm not sure, but uh, you're right. What What strikes me is the... Uh, is the two different colors of um, of icing in there. And I, I know that when I saw it, I kind of was intrigued and I thought, well, maybe they're flavored differently, but I, I don't think they are. I think it's like one big squirt, but just two different colors. But um, no, I think they hit the flavor nicely. They usually do with Oreos. Yeah, these, I could, uh, I'm almost done with this, this bag. I bought them yesterday and I've gone through almost all of it. So, <laughs> wow, that is that's saying something, especially since you bought three racks of cookies yesterday. I, I imagine that uh, your diet has been busted so far this week. But you know what I have here? I'm actually opening a Diet Coke feisty cherry right now to try to uh, to dip this in. So I'm dipping it in there now. It's separated a little bit, but that's only because I kind of squeezed on it. And hmm. All right, I'm going to bite it. Eh, mine melted a little bit. I'm not sure if this is good, though. <laughs> not, not thing about, I was too busy thinking about the consistency. I'm not sure if this is, like, my mode of eating this cookie from now on. Um, Yeah. I mean, if anything, it kind of wastes the flavor of the actual soda because it's it's just too much of the same thing at the same time. And it actually kind of overpowers the diet flavor. Yeah, I've, I, I tried them with milk last night just because that's what you do, and I'm busy. I ate so many of them, but... um. I think the milk actually kind of detracted from it. Yeah, I just did the milk too. No. <laughs> so far for me, these are the best with just like water. You know, like if your mouth gets dry, just wash them down with, with some water. I would actually put milk third behind the soda. So I would go water, soda, and then milk. These don't need milk. No. That kind of confuses your palate too much. So 
I love these, man. As I mentioned earlier, I've always dreamed of different flavors that, that use and utilize cola. I'm a big fan of the, of the flavor. I know that this idea kind of repulses people. Cherry cola, it's very polarizing. It's very cola-izing. Some people <laughs> are not into it at all. My wife, she had like two bites. She didn't want the rest of the cookies. More for me. Snackmaster Jr., he likes them. Online, I've heard people go back and forth, and we conducted an informal poll of our listeners. 53% went with the cherry cola. We're leading with these because Eden called in. But these are also probably my favorite. I think I'm going to give these an 8.5 out of 10. I love the flavor a lot. I love how bold they are. When we get to the pina colada, you'll see that's a very close race between those two. But I, I really like the risk that they took here. And even if in slightly in parts of my head, I think the pina colada tastes better. I just love the risk. And I have to adore the risk that they took here, putting the pop rocks in there, just going for this flavor. And when they made this flavor, they went for it. Yeah. You know, they didn't they didn't uh, tiptoe the line. They really made a cherry cola Oreo. It tastes like how you think it would, if anything, just slightly less sweet. What's your what's your score on there and your roundup? Yeah, great minds think alike. Um, I knew I was going to have to pick one, and I think I went with cherry cola as my favorite, too. The flavor, again, I, I love, I mean, opening it up and getting the waft of the smell. I mean, that sold me right there. I knew I was going to be a fan. And um, biting into it, I did break them apart, lick the cream. The cream is fantastic on these. And I would probably give them a seven, except... The Pop Rocks in there added just that extra enough to put me up to an eight. These are phenomenal. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of these. Delicious. We are going to have Dave Magpiong <laughs> on the line next. He is from Belmoir, New Jersey. He submitted the Pina Colada Flavored Oreo Thins. I'm on the line today with Dave Magpiong. He's from Jersey, an avid birder, family man, Pina Colada Oreo Thins creator, and a sixth grade social studies teacher at Voorhees Middle School. And my listeners may or may not know this, but Crystal Lake, Camp Crystal Lake, is also located in Jersey. Dave, thank you for joining us. How you doing, dude? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. See, I'm a huge Friday the 13th fan, so I put the Voorhees thing last because that's the first thing I wanted to hit you on. Is that a big deal over there? Do people talk about Camp Crystal Lake, or is it just happens to be the name of the middle school? Well, it's in the town of Voorhees, which is obviously Jason's last name. Um, I do not believe there is any connection, but the funny thing is, there is a pool club not too far from where we live called the Crystal Lake Pool. Wow. <laughs> and we actually spend a lot of our summertime there. And I'm not allowed to bring my machete in, so... Oh, I mean, it's a really cool place. Oh, man, I, I love it. I love it, and I love that the town plays into it, too. It's actually right at Crystal Lake. I mean, that's the name of the lake. I believe it was called Crystal Lake before the movies came out. It might be the inspiration. So you're an avid birder, and before we got on the air, you told me that birding actually played into you being selected as a finalist in this contest because it inspired the flavor that you chose, which was the pina colada thins. Tell us about that. I will spare you all the birder jargon, all the birder drama, um, and just cut to the chase on that. Several years ago, a really rare bird showed up in Key West, <laughs> and a friend of mine said, hey, you want to go down and see this? I've never done anything at that point, but I said, hey, what the heck, why not? So we flew down. At the time, my father-in-law was vacationing down there. So after we found the bird, you know, we were down there for a few days. And one day we met up with my father and did a trip with him on a boat. And I came back after that trip and I said to my wife, we got to get down there. You're going to love it. The kids will enjoy it. And then we ended up going with my father-in-law, you know, my whole family with my father-in-law staying with him like three or four times. And we were supposed to go last spring in 2017. And the trip fell through for a few different reasons. And I was just sitting there thinking, oh, man, it would have been so nice to be there with a pina colada in my hand on the beach. And at that point, I heard about the contest and I tweeted off, wouldn't it be great to uh, have a tropical escape with pina colada Oreos? And I you know, submitted a little bit more information about the recipe. And I didn't hear anything back until December. It was nuts. I was curious because I know that on some of the flavor submissions, and I'm sure our listeners, they've submitted a thousand times or they guessed the mystery Oreo or they've tried to get their thing done. But a lot of them, they just ask you for a flavor. But you mentioned that they asked you for a bit of a recipe. So they didn't want you just to say pina colada. They wanted to know how you'd construct it. Well, it was so long ago and I heard it offhanded. I want to say it was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but that's a 
fuzzy memory I have. So I tweeted off, hey, you know, let's let's do the pina colada Oreo. And I suggested, you know, the pineapple coconut cream on specifically the golden Oreo because you can't do pina colada on a chocolate Oreo. That ain't going to work. No, yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> so you say they got back in touch with you in December. What was the process like for that? <laughs> I screwed up. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I don't use Twitter very often. I'm not a very good tweeter or Twitterer. I'm not sure exactly what that person would be called. So I posted that, and I kind of got busy with other things going on in my life, and I haven't really been on Twitter much since then. We fast forward to December, literally around December 10th or something like that, and I had a voicemail at work, and I was like, eh, I don't usually get voicemails. Most of it is through email at this point. So I listened to it, and it sounded like a scam call. You're a finalist in this content. Come on, are you kidding me? <laughs> but then they started using my fledging birders handle and talking about my Twitter account. I'm thinking nobody's going to connect, go through the work to connect my Twitter and my birding stuff to my school account and then call me on my work voicemail. Imagine if someone did, though. What an elaborate scheme. You know, that that's like a superhero villain esque scheme. And I think I just watched too many cartoons with my three and a half year old, but if I was a super villain, that's the type of scheme I'd want to concoct. <laughs> the <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, I do love these thins, and my initial thought that they really would make kind of a light summer spring cracker. It's it's refreshing. Um one thing I thought was really interesting was we did a local interview for a newspaper and my wife and my son and I have all tried the cookies. My daughter did not want to try the pina colada because she hates pineapple and she hates coconut. And she tried it in front of the reporter, in front of the photographer, and I was expecting her to spit it out and be embarrassed. She ended up eating like five cookies. She loved them. Yeah, and plus, $500,000 makes things more palatable. So when the news puts a camera on you in a contest to win, and you're the daughter of the creator, you got to get all Fear Factor style and throw that cookie down your throat, even if you don't necessarily want to eat it. That's a good point, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right? If you want to be part of the wing. So, guys, if you do eat these cookies, if you try all three of these, and if you want Dave Mag Piong to win this particular contest, you like these pina coladas, you could do so. By voting at MyOreoCreationContest.com or simply text VOTE to 59526. Standard data and messaging rates do apply. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. If you do win, would you agree to come back on? I, I would definitely come back on. That would be awesome. I do want to point out one thing. It is Teacher Appreciation Week. And, you know, as a figurehead of teachers in America, if you want to show appreciation for me by voting for my Oreo, I would love that. <laughs> Wow, you are you are killing it at Final <laughs> Tribal Council right now. So, guys, you don't cast your vote for who you want to eliminate. You cast your vote for who you want to win. And if you want that to be pina colada and a great teacher doing the Lord's work, the birder, <laughs> the jersey native, of the man from Jason Voorhees, hometown or namesake, whatever it may be. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. Dooner, it was a pleasure. That was Dave. We've got them here. We're going to review them now. The Pina Colada Oreo Thins. MSG, have you had a thin before? I've never even picked up thins before. I think maybe my wife bought a, a pack of them a long time ago, and I'd rather just have an Oreo, to tell you the truth, than honestly, than like two thins. I would. Two thins don't make a right? <laughs> Isn't that what they No. Well, yeah, I kind of avoided these too because I was always. They were always sort of similar to the chocolatey flavors to me, and there was just. It was redundant because they're already regular sized Oreos. <laughs> but these pita colada ones, this is a flavor that might benefit from this thin shape. They are a vanilla thinned cookie with pineapple and coconut flavored cream inside. These ones, 150 calories, but you get to eat four of them. 11 grams of sugar. Uh, let's dive into them. Have you had one yet? Yeah, I've eaten uh, <clears throat> I've eaten a handful of these too. For a coconut, for something you think would be predominantly coconut, it actually has a pineapple-y smell to the package uh, that, that overpowers the coconut quite a bit. Coconut has a very strong scent to it, and they went, uh, they didn't go overboard with that. It doesn't smell like sunscreen, you know, or Malibu rum. <laughs> yeah, these are actually my son's favorite out of the three. What were your thoughts on them? I mean, you've already said you favored the cherry cola Oreo, so everything is going to be kind of a little less than that. So where do you have the pina colada? Because I have these very close with the cherry cola. And in fact, I could see myself binging these easier or eating these on a spring day. That thin thing that they got going for them, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's playing a mind trick on me. You know, now that it's springtime, summertime, you want to get a little thinner for your clothes. <laughs> so 
why not just eat a thin Oreo? I don't know. You're eating just as many calories if you eat four of these things. But I don't know. I feel lighter, man. I feel quicker on my feet. Yeah, no, these are good. I, I, I think they balance the flavors nicely, like I said, between the coconut and the pineapple. This is a really good uh, really good frosting in the middle there. I, I think I took a little bit away from it because I just I don't like the vanilla Oreos that much. I'm not sure why they decided to go with the thin ones on these and not the other ones, but uh, you're right. There's a perception that they're thinner, so you're not cheating yourself too much. Uh, I'd give these probably about a six. Too much cookie for me. You know, it just didn't didn't wow me like it would with the cherry cola. Maybe I've tasted enough pina colada things, or to me, it was, it was passable, but not as not great like the uh, the cherry cola ones. Yeah, I have these at an eight out of ten, which is very high. The other ones I had eight out of five. I think regular Oreos I have around a seven. Oreos are okay, but I prefer I actually prefer Hydrox and I prefer Jojos over regular Oreos. I, I tend to just avoid regular Oreos. I, I prefer going for these the the off label flavors. But a ten shark store they're actually really good if you freeze them too. I don't know if you've tried that. The cherry cola ones are as well. I haven't. I'll have to give that a shot. We got our last one here. It is the Kettle Corn Oreo. These were submitted by Robert D. of Westfield, Massachusetts. I think we have him coming on the line. (laughs) Hey, Robert, how's it going today? Hey there, Miss G. How are you today? I'm great. So I I understand you came up with the uh, Kettle Corn idea for for the Oreos. uh, What inspired you for that uh, come up with that flavor. Yeah, well, I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts on my way to the movie theater to to watch uh, one of these superhero movies with my kid. And every time I'm in Dunkin' Donuts, I've gotten thinking about popcorn. And I was like, wow, what if they had kettle corn popcorn flavored coffee? And then my kid was like, well, you should try... Uh, you should try uh, kettle corn flavored cookies. And uh, he told me about this Oreo contest, and I was like, well, what if you put uh, kettle corn in a cookie? And then, uh, you know, then the guy's from Oreo, out of nowhere, I thought they were trying to steal my identity because they sent me all these papers to try and, like, fill out my social security number and my address and all these other things. So I thought that they were just trying to scam me. But it turns out, I'm the finalist, and I got twenty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> so, what are you gonna do with that money there? That what, what's with the twenty-five grand? What's that for? Well, the twenty-five thousand, I already spent it playing Keno. But when I win the half a million dollars, I plan on uh, playing some youth league hockey, <laughs> and uh, you know, going to the Pats games, maybe seeing if I can rub elbows with uh, Bobby Kraft over there now, and maybe see uh, uh, my, you know, the lovely Tom Brady. <laughs> well, anything you want to say to our listeners about your flavor? Anything you uh, <laughs> you want to add to the contest here? <laughs> yeah, I just like people to know that the popcorn pieces that are inside of the cream, those are actually pieces of popcorn that I personally broke up and chewed up and left in the bag. So they had to take all my microwave popcorn bags over like years of me eating microwave popcorn in my man cave, and they put those in the cream for you. So I really <laughs> hope you enjoy my milk. <laughs> well, Robert... Uh, best of luck to you, bud. I I, I hope uh, this changes your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to vote for Robert's confection, his concoction, <laughs> this dream he had while standing in line at Dunkin' Donuts. You want to help him win some Keno? MyOreoCreationContest.com or text VOTE to 59526. And don't forget, you can win that uh, $6 Fandango gift card where you might be able to win uh, the projector in the uh, sleeping bag. <laughs> it just so happened that these are kind of in the order that we ranked them, so there's no suspense here. These are third, but these are a distant third for me. Just so we give the rundown here, my kettle corn flavored, artificially flavored Oreo. They're with a the vanilla cookie. They have a kettle corn cream inside with the puffed millet pieces, the controversial, <laughs> at least in my opinion, millet pieces. They're like little pieces of popcorn at the bottom of a bag. And these are two cookies, 150 calories, 7 grams of fat, 12 grams of sugar. These are not a thin. This is a regular size Oreo. They smell... They smell like pancakes to me, man. Like, if so, if they didn't put kettle corn Oreo in here, I would think this was, like, breakfast pancake Oreo. Let me bite it. Mmm. I guess, yeah, you know what, though? The hints of butter in there, that, like, reinforces my, my like, this is flapjacks with maple syrup on it. Right? What does this taste like to you? Does it taste like kettle corn? No, you nailed it. You, you smell them. It smells like, it smells like syrup. Like, you open the bag, and it definitely does smell like syrup to me. And then you do... 
when you lick the cream, you get a lot of the butter flavor. So I think you're right. It could just be a, you know, mixed up pancakes and butter flavored Oreo. And yeah, I think that I had to look up what millet was. Honestly, I saw that they advertise on the front, like with puffed millet pieces. I don't know what those are. So I looked it up and I still am not a hundred percent sure, but there must be a reason to use that instead of popcorn. Yeah. I think they missed the mark there. These are really, really sweet too much. So those pieces are like speed bumps in there on the road to happiness for me they don't dissolve like uh you know like the pop rocks wood in your mouth and stuff i think that t- takes away from the overall experience i'm gonna have to put these in at a generous four yeah i i'm with you on that i'm i'm personally not gonna finish this this thing of five for me means that i bought it at least finish it i'm not if if you know Snackmaster jr he does like these yeah these aren't my jam either and as, as listeners usually know i'm not huge on things that are overly sweet uh, especially a cookie that's overly sweet. These these already make my teeth hurt. These are, for me, maybe a little lower. These are like a two and a half, a three out of 10. We did, obviously that, that, that was that, that was a bit with Robert. We did, in all fair disclosure to this contest, we're, we're not affiliated with Oreo in any way whatsoever. We did try to get all of the creators on. My own fellow mass hole in my backyard, we couldn't track the guy down. The other two did happen to be on Twitter. We were able to set it up with them. So best of luck to Robert. And I guess we can avoid that awkward conversation of not, you know, liking... <laughs> yeah, the guest Oreo. <laughs> he is a fellow. Well, yeah. He is a fellow. Uh, he is a fellow uh, mass. You know, fellow mass guy though. So really quick on the mass whole thing. Do you guys are you guys like that to each other? Is that just to other people, or is it just you know that's just who you are? Some people think we're rude. No, it's, it's just because we're fast thinkers. Oh. Okay. <laughs> We're Snack Masters Inc. You can find this episode and all of our old ones at snackmastersinc.com. We're also on Spotify. That's right. We just got on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and everywhere podcasts are heard around the world. Visit our Instagram at Snack Masters Inc. to see all the food photos from this episode as well as mini reviews. We're on Twitter at Snack Masters Inc. And if you'd like to question, comment, lick some Oreos with MSG, snackmastersinc at gmail.com. Now, I'm going to admit something here that I probably shouldn't admit as a host of a show called Snack Masters, but I never heard of the My Oreo Creation Contest, so I did not submit a flavor. Did you submit a flavor? No, I didn't. This this caught me too late to enter one, but... So, MSG, let's say this contest was still open. What Oreo would you like to see? Because for me, <laughs> this Cherry Cola Oreo... <laughs> was like a dream come true. It is it is from my, my my wildest dreams and imaginations. But if I had to do something else, I would go I would go savory because I feel like these cookies don't go in that direction. So what I would really like is a chocolate Oreo. But we're gonna go thin here, okay? And we're gonna call it filet mignon with A1. And it's going to be a meat flavored cream with an A1 swirl on it on a chocolate Oreo thin. Wow. That, yeah, you really uh, dug deep in the bag for that. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've kind of talked about it before, and I think still throughout all this snacking process, my favorite snack is going to be probably just probably plain old chicken and biscuits. So we mentioned it before, and I think I would go with chicken and biscuit flavored Oreo with some sort of gravy flavored filling. You know, again, with the savory, I think that'd be good. Yeah, that to me, and, I, and again, I don't think either of our products would be flying off the shelf, but I'd buy them and I'd, I'd buy plenty of them. No, that's a good call. I like the remember the chicken in a biscuit Oreo that we made where we took the two chicken and a biscuits and then we put the, the Dunkin' Donuts cream in the middle. That was like a that was like uh chicken with coffee it was it was delicious i would go for that one i bet the uh the dude from wakefield robert d yeah i bet he'd be all over the uh the dunkin donuts chicken and biscuit oreo <laughs> surprised he didn't come up with it yeah. snack master junior take us away i'm here with snack master junior to try the my oreo creation oreos now snack master junior we have cherry cola oreos Kettle corn Oreos and pina colada Oreos. Give these a taste. Tell me what you think. Here is the cherry cola Oreo. Mm-hmm. It's really yummy. Uh-huh. You don't drink soda, so you don't know if it tastes like cherry cola or not. But do you feel the fizzies on your tongue in the cream? No. Here is the kettle corn Oreo. Mm-hmm. That one is yummy too. Mm-hmm. And here is the last one. This is the pina colada Oreo. Give that just one bite. Yum, too. They're all yummy? <laughs> uh, which one is your favorite of these three? Mm, mm, popcorn. 
Which one's your second favorite? This one. Cherry Cola. Uh huh. And then Pina Colada. Uh huh. I only like coconut, you remember? <laughs> okay. Oh, kettle corn is your winner. Yeah. And that was the BC tries, okay? Oh, okay. Snack Master 3. Snack Master Incorporated. Snack Master. Snack Master. You'll be snacking with the Snack Master. Snack Master. Snack Master.